Hey Mel! So, I've tried to make this video a couple of times, but I was trying to uh, combine it with a video for Citizen Worm, and it just it wasn't as coherent as I would have liked. So, I'm gonna go ahead and remake it again. Hopefully this one will be good enough to use. Uh, so, I think burlesque dancers really had it, it pretty good off. They made, on average, 16 times what the average American citizen was making back then. They got headline billing in a theater, and it was even considered middle-class respectable to be in a burlesque show, you know? Uh, if you remember the movie Funny Girl, uh, I don't know if you've seen that, but it's a great movie, and they make a big deal that she becomes a Ziegfeld girl, which is a burlesque show. Uh, I, you really have to say the job has changed with society morals. Uh, in fact, now there's kind of this movement to slide back towards a more morality in the strip club where they don't want us to do lap dances. So a lot of states are banning the contact lap dances and going to 18 inches away. Uh, I don't really agree with that, of course, because I'm a dancer and people can still do this at normal dance clubs. I don't understand why we should regulate this, it's personal morality, but people get away with it. Like uh, in Tennessee, they went after them by calling them uh, SOBs, Sexually Oriented Businesses. Indeed, uh, just about every strip club, you're not an employee, you're an independent contractor, and you do pay a stage fee or floor fee or floor rental or whatever the club kind of chooses to call it. And that's money you pay uh, when you walk in the door or when you walk out of the door. It's a one-time fee. Sometimes they add like contract damages on it, like they fine you for things. Uh, sometimes it costs more to come in later. So it's, it's kind of interesting, even though the club wouldn't exist without the dancers, the dancers actually pay the clubs to go work there, like we're hairdressers, kind of like running booth space at a hair salon. I'm, I'm sure most people are familiar with that concept. Uh, I kind of enjoy the uh, lap dancing aspect of my job because that's where we make most of our money. and. Uh, it's kind of like the, the free market, the more you can offer what the customer wants, like you look more like their fantasy and interestingly enough a lot of it isn't just how you look, it's knowing the customer. So if you can be well versed in many different subjects, if you can uh, pretty much I consider like cold read people, go ask them a couple uh, questions and then from those questions I can infer other things and I can kind of guess ahead of them and say things that I know would be pleasing to them based on their previous responses to questions and and that is really appealing to them and so I become more attractive because I've said things that they like and, and then they spend money on me. And so it's kind of funny because many many times I hear people say you're too intelligent to work here and I think oh my gosh no it's so much better to be intelligent because you meet so many different people have to be able to get along with them, you have to be what they want. And sometimes it's just, you know, a hot girl who's smiling and acting like she's in a good mood, and sometimes they they want you to be intelligent and to talk, and, and you have to be able to do that if you want to make those people's money. And there are people that I pretty much never deal with when I'm at work, no matter where I work. Uh, ghetto, if you're ghetto, if you have gold teeth, uh, your clothes are like way too fucking baggy on you. I, I just don't fucking deal with it because once I can't conform to what they want a woman to be, I've tried, I just, I can't fulfill their fantasy, so it's really me just wasting my time if I go over there. Uh, another thing that I think is kind of a misunderstanding is People always imply that by being a dancer you're going to somehow be more likely to use drugs. And I think this is really a misunderstanding of causation and correlation. You see, at one point I went to a private all-girls school. And the girls who went there, they their families had money and they got good sized allowances and about 85% used cocaine. 
I think the catalyst for the drug use is really more about money. So if a young person has access to a lot of money, there's a good chance they might end up using some drugs. I, I think that's really what's going on there. I always hear people like blame dancing for uh, drug use, but drug users tend to burn out really quick from being dancers because they make enough money, they can buy a lot of drugs, and then they get way, way, way too high and then they can't come to work. Because you have to keep your shit together when you're at work. Any club will fire you if, if you are obviously fucked up like that. Like, yeah, if, if you're drinking at a club that serves alcohol, yeah, they're, they're going to be able to deal with that a little bit. If you're using heroin, they'll fire you. If you're obviously using cocaine, they will fire you. If you are obviously on ecstasy, they will fire you. And yes, I imagine there are some clubs that exist that look over those sorts of things, but it's really rare. I actually worked at a club once where they had drug dogs come in and smell us in our lockers. Yeah, that was a nice uh, Germany kind of experience. So I don't think people should blame the dancing for the drug use. I think they should blame, you know, the girl's already established morality where she's decided that maybe she just goes along with the group or is willing to do something that she obviously knows is incredibly damaging to her and her future, including her future money-making skills because, you know, they, they do kind of care what you look like and if you look like you use a lot of drugs, and they're going to be less inclined to want to spend money on you and your value goes down. So drug use is just bad all around. And there are plenty of dancers that get that concept. Uh, I think that was uh, about what I wanted to say. Uh, if you have any more questions, totally feel free to um, ask me in a video or PM me or ask in the uh, comments section. I always love it when you make videos to me. I know I haven't uh, really made one back to you before. I just, uh, I really like your videos and I didn't want to make you uncomfortable at all. I hope you kind of liked that burlesque one I sent you. I really sent it to you for fun. I thought you'd like my little, my little kitty ears I had on. <laughs> I like dressing up like a cat. It's kind of fun. And my little leg warmers, are like, I know you can't even look at it now, but I had those 60s style leg warmers with like nothing on my leg. It's kind of sexy, but uh, meow, cute. I get these cosplay uh, magazines from Japan. I love the fashion, they're so cute. I love little Japanese girls, they're so cute. <sighs> All right, I'm sorry, Mel. I totally went off on a tangent. I hope you have a good day. If you don't like this, you don't have to, you know, respond or, you know, accept the video. Hope you have a good day, bye.